conference call hosted by S Angel Technologies Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Jill Chandrani from S. Angel Technologies. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thanks to you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dilip Bedcon Q1 FY25 earnings call. From the management, we have with us Mr. Devendra Jain, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Rohan Suryavanshi, Head Strategy and Planning, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Bansal, Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin this call, let me mention the standard disclaimer. The presentation that we have uploaded on the stock exchange, including the interaction in this call, contains or may contain certain forward-looking statements concerning our business prospects and prospects and profitability, which are subject to some uncertainties, and the actual results could differ from those. Now, let me hand over the call to Mr. Rohan Surya Banshi for his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Jill. Uh, on behalf of Dilbilcon Limited, I welcome all the participants in our quarter one FY25 results con call. Uh, the results and presentation have been uploaded on the stock exchange, and I hope all of you had a chance to look at it. Uh, at the outset, I would like to share some industry updates. It has been evident in the recent union budget that the government has high aspirations for the infrastructure sector with a view to making it a powerhouse in our economy. There has been an allocation of rupees 11 lakh crore for the infrastructure sector this year, indicating a growth of 11.1% as compared to last year's budget. This contributes to approximately 3.4% of the GDP. Road transport and highway has been allocated rupees 2.78 lakh crores. Railway has been allocated rupees 2.65 lakh crores. Logistics and supply chain sector has been allocated 2 lakh crores. And Metro Rail has been allocated rupees 24,900 crores. The cabinet has also approved eight national high-speed rail corridor projects worth over rupees 50,000 crores to improve logistics efficiency and connectivity across the country. All these things are said to have a multiplier effect on our economic growth and also boost employment opportunities. Above all, it will give impetus to India's unwavering commitment to a futuristic and connected uh, India. This scenario definitely augurs well for our growth trajectory given the government's sharp focus on the infrastructure segment. Now coming to the sector and the company, during the quarter under review, the order activity, award ordering activity was weak across all sectors, uh, which was uh, Expected, which was as expected because of the elections, but now is expected to pick up. For us also, we received a single order in the railway segment of rupees 926 crores. But going forward, on the back of a strong order pipeline and across all our segments, we are confident that we will get an order inflow of rupees 15 to 16,000 crores for the first for the full year. And there is enough orders across the segments like I mentioned that we look at. Uh, on this quarter onwards, in our order book, we've also started including order value from our coal MDOs, which we were not doing in the past. As is the current market practice, players are including that. Uh, so we've also made changes. And in our current order of rupees 18,600 crores, we have added three years coal MD order of rupees 2,400 crores. So while the total estimated revenue from our coal MDOs would be around rupees 5,500 crores over the next three years, but this will be accounted at the SPU level out of which 
DBL will be getting around 2400 crores, like I mentioned. On the execution front, we have experienced payment related challenges primarily from JJM projects that resulted in higher debtors and stretched working capital. Now, it's a temporary phenomenon because of elections and other things that were happening in the government. But it is the top agenda of the central government, and the sector would see a major execution ramp up soon, along with solution for all these stock payments. So while our debt has temporarily increased, we are very confident that as the financial year goes forward and the payment from the government uh, gets normalized, we will achieve our target debt level of 1,000 crores rented by the end of this fiscal year, as we had indicated on our last call. In our investment portfolio, of ham assets. I'm happy to inform that recently we have fully concluded the Shrimp Inuit deal with transfer of 51% equity stake in the last asset, that is Patrapalli Katgora project. With this transfer, our entire deal is concluded with the Shrimp group. While we will continue to do OM of their assets for the life duration of those assets. In other news, in our Alpha uh, Invest Asset Deal, we are progressing as per plan. Till now, we have transferred 26% stake in four assets out of a total deal of 18 assets. Our Invest formation process is also progressing well. We have applied to SEBI and we've already received initial remarks. We are still uh, very uh, confident that we will be able to create the input by the end of this financial year. In our coal MDO business, that constitutes Yarmal Coal MDO, which is the largest coal MDO in the country, I'm happy to report that we have achieved production of 3.27 million metric ton in the last quarter. To give perspective of our execution progress, Last year, we had done a total production of 7 million metric ton uh, versus contractual requirement of 5 million metric ton at Siamal. This year, our contractual requirement is 10 million metric ton, but we are already running with a run rate to achieve 50% more than that. That is 15 million metric ton in this financial year. Another good news, Pachwala MDO, we are also progressing as per plan. During the quarter under review, we have achieved our coal production of 1.46 million metric ton. Here, we are on target to achieve the 7 million metric ton, uh, which is the full capacity for this. As I discussed before as well, but just to reiterate, as I conclude my remarks here, this is ZBL 2.0 where we are in the process of creating a fully diversified company working across 8-10 different work infrastructure sectors with an aim to achieve zero net debt in the next two years along with having a healthy mix of short-term and long-term assured cash flow businesses and industry-leading return ratio. So that is the goal that we are working towards and we hope to keep delighting you quarter or quarter. Now I would like to hand over the call to our CFO for the financial overview. Thank you. Uh, good evening everyone. I welcome all our stakeholders to our early call. Let me present the results of the Bitcoin Limited for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024 and highlights of current financial year. The company has completed four projects uh, aggregating to rupees 3604 crores and won one railway project's worth 926 crores. On financial side, on year on year, that is quarter one FI24 versus quarter one FI25, uh, on revenue front, the revenue uh, is decreased by 9.61%. Uh, 9 uh, in quarter one FI25 from 2,600 
नाइन क्रॉस इन क्वार्टर वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर टू रुपीज टू थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड फिफ्टी एट क्रॉस दिस इज मेनली ड्यू टू लेसर रेवेन्यू फ्रॉम रोड एंड हाईवे बिजनेस इबिटा डिक्रीज बाई ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट सिक्स टू परसेंट इन क्वार्टर वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी फाइव फ्रॉम थ्री थर्टी फाइव क्रोर इन क्वार्टर वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर टू रुपीज टू सिक्सटी टू क्रोर इन क्वार्टर वन एफ आई ट्वेंटी फाइव द इबिटा मार्जिन मेनली डिक्रीज ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ रिडक्शन इन रेवेन्यू एंड ओवर हेड एक्सपेंसिस ऑन दी रिड्यूस रेवेन्यू Profit after tax is also decreased by 43.17 percent in quarter one FI 25 from 83 crore to 47 crore in quarter one FI 25. This is mainly on account of reduction in revenue and corresponding to beta margin reduction. Uh, thank you all, and now we can open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you again. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from Shravan Shah from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. uh thank you sir uh sir uh, first uh, on the on the order inflow front so now <clears throat> we are seeing the higher order inflow of 15 to 16000 crore versus last time we said 10 to 12000 odd crore so just trying to understand uh, for the uh, how many value of projects we have already bidded and where we did yet to open that is one and second how much more we are planning to bid and broadly if we break up this 15 16000 crore order in flow so how much we are looking in the ham and any other sectors if you want to highlight thank you shavan ji for your question uh yes you are very right in the last quarter we had given a more muted guidance but as the year has progressed and uh, uh, as you well aware the sector has seen a depleting order book because of weak ordering from last year uh to ensure a steady growth going forward uh we have reassessed our numbers and that's why you see the numbers of 15 to 16 thousand crore that we uh, we've done uh we are quite confident of reaching these numbers across all the sectors that we were working in that's the sectors that you know that we are in uh besides that we besides the sector that you are aware that the company works in uh we've also gone in the optic fiber uh segment and uh, About 50,000 crores worth of orders were floated in that, so we were participating there as well. Those bids have also been uh, have also already uh, been done. So let's see. We are hoping to, to have some good news there as well and start there. Uh, I can't give you very specifically sector specific breakup of orders how it will flow, but uh, like I mentioned, uh, we look across all the sectors and it has been in our endeavour. uh in the last few years to move away from a single sector dependency to a more uh robust uh multi sector sort of order book and that is that is what our agenda and aim will be this year as well uh talking about the ham versus epc uh our primary focus and our primary liking is always epc projects uh the ham route has always been used by dpl to fulfill its epc needs but even since you are i think we would still be thinking about at least uh, 5 to 6000 crores of hands in this total order book so uh, to break it up two thirds of the order book would be straight up epc one third would be about big uh would be ham flash bot like any kind of uh, ppp project then i'm going to ask you okay okay uh second uh, in terms of the on uh, on the revenue front so uh, obviously this quarter was a uh, muted one and we were looking at kind of a flat uh, for full year fr25 so now is there any uh, upward revision in the uh, revenue also uh, this year or maybe possible for next year given the order inflow will be higher this year so fr26 uh, is there any Kind of a guidance that uh, are we are we likely to give for uh, for 
Shamanji, it will be too early to give you an indication for 26, but I am very confident that it will be much better than this year because once the order book formulates, this year in fact we have given you a flattish guidance earlier as well. Uh, but I think uh, looking at you know how uh, the you know ordering has still been weak uh, till now, we would actually be looking at you know a five percent degrowth from last first, last year's numbers. I think that would be a better assumption to make at this stage, uh, given the ordering flow uh, sort of pace uh, that that has happened. We were expecting it to start much faster, but given that, we think that is a better number. But 26, I think, would be a good year. But that we can only we will only be able to comment on that once the end of the year numbers are in hand where we know how the order book looks and stands. Anything earlier than that would be premature. And in, in terms of the margins also, so this quarter was 11.1%. So we are looking at 12 to 14%. So uh, given now we are seeing a 5% lower uh, revenue growth for uh, uh, degrowth rather uh, this year. So in terms of the margin also, uh, will it be a kind of 11%? Sure. Yeah, I think it, given uh, that we gave up more and uh, the margin should, as a, I think, as a good prudent strategy, it would be good to take the current numbers as the beta numbers, which is around 11 to 12 percent. I think that would be a good way to think about it. I think earlier we indicated 11 to 13 percent, but I would say 11, 12 percent is a good figure to kind of think about, given the, uh, like I said, some of the challenges around uh, the depleting order. Okay. And sir, on the on the date front, uh, uh, correct me if I uh, 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 I am uh, I am wrong. Uh, uh, you mentioned this year uh, by by uh, though this quarter 700 crore uh, the uh, gross debt has increased because of the working capital. So want to understand two aspects uh, whether uh, uh, this working capital, particularly data, has it uh, has it collected uh, post the June till now. And how we look at the working capital uh, by end of FY25, and broadly, uh, you you mentioned a thousand crore gross debt reduction in FY25. We have collected some uh, uh, after the June this thing, and I didn't mention uh, uh, in terms of like the uh, target debt levels you mentioned. So yeah, from here we are looking at a reduction of thousand plus crores of debt level from where we are standing right now. Uh, so you're right uh, about that from the current levels where we look at. But uh, I meant I'd given you a target of around 1,000 crores by the year end, which was 1,500 crores uh, as of as last, last financial year. But to elaborate more on like collection, I'll uh, hand over to our CFO. So, so uh, basically total net debt on 31st March was 1,515 crores. Now it, it is increased by almost five, uh, 700 crore. Uh, the total uh, term loan is only 140 crore of, uh, as on 30th June. So the reduction in debt will happen only in the working capital. So what Rohanji said, the reduction uh, in the working capital uh, limits. So from 1500 to 6000 crore. So today the outstanding is around 2226 crore. So that will be uh, reduced to say uh, 1000 crore at the end of this financial year. I, I feel this is clear. Okay, okay. So, so from 1226 crore net debt, uh, we will be reducing by uh, close to 1000 odd crore. So around 1200, 1250 odd crore net debt by end of uh, uh, March that we are looking at. Uh, this is right. Okay, okay, and and then the next year this will be uh, uh, the entire will be a kind of we will become a uh, net cash kind of a company by FR26. Yes, yes, positive. Yes, that okay. is the agenda. Sir. Okay, so so there just wanted to uh, 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 elaborate further. So how much uh, in terms of the broadly uh, uh, the alpha alternative? How much already? Uh, obviously, for four projects we have uh, mentioned that uh, 161 crore we have received. So how much more cash are we going to receive? Uh, so that would be a major uh, uh, driver in terms of the uh, date reduction and plus the working capital. I think we mentioned that in the presentation on page number. Let me tell you how that uh, deal uh, 26? 36. 36. 36. 
which one is here? Uh, on page 26, we mentioned how the uh, uh, equity would flow from uh, you know, the investment that will come from uh, Alpha and in uh, in the years. So if you want to look at it, Sanjay Sir will explain. So, uh, uh, Sanjay, uh, as of 31st March, we uh, we had uh, divested three assets in 26%. And this quarter, on July 1st week, we divested 26% in another asset. So out of this uh, 478 crore, which is shown in page number 26 of our investor presentation, around 160 crore, uh, 190 crore precisely we received uh, in July. So out of the balance, this will be received majorly in this quarter. And one asset may uh, uh, go to early next quarter. So balance money out of 477 we received 190, and balance will be received in quarter uh, two majorly, and uh, some money in quarter three. Okay, okay, understood, understood. And and lastly, just on 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 the particularly on the standalone in terms of the uh, uh, finance costs and other income. So just wanted to understand. So. We were uh, kind of uh, looking at 350 or kind of uh, total finance costs for this year at uh, standalone. So this quarter, uh, uh, it has uh, because of the uh, date has increased, so finance cost has also increased 119 odd crores. So how do we uh, look at for full year the finance cost? And then the same way the other income was or just a uh, 13 odd crores. So there, how much more are we are we going to uh, receive any kind of? Uh, uh, a dividend from any of the inmates of uh, SRAM or uh, uh, any other uh, uh, MDO uh, through uh, through where the, uh, uh, this income other income can can go up. So still, uh, even after uh, increase in debt in first quarter, we still believe the debt cost uh, will be between uh, 350 to 400 crore. Uh, this is number one, and. Uh, in terms of uh, other income, uh, let me tell you the other income consists of various items like dividend from the existing stream inmate units, uh, distribution uh, like uh, uh, the interest distri distribution and uh, uh, interest on our income tax refund and all. So yes, uh, in quarter one uh, there is a reduced uh, other income, but we feel uh, this income because uh, last quarter, uh, this quarter the distribution from SIM uh, was around 5, five rupees, which is more than our expectation. So going forward, we think ki whatever uh, we had given in uh, slide number 26 uh, will be uh, more or less achieved. Okay, okay. Got it, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Next question is from Ishita Loda from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Ishita Loda, you may go ahead. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes, Ishita Ji, you are audible. Go ahead. Uh, so, my first question is on the coal mining business. In uh, Ishita Ji, can you be a little loud, please? You are okay. audible, but your voice is very low. All right. Uh, the revenue in coal mining business has actually declined despite like better production volume. So is this due to uh, lower realization or uh, what has led to the uh, reduction in revenue from 162 crores in last quarter to 150 crores in current quarter? Uh, madam, uh, let me answer this question. First of all, we have not given the coal revenue uh, in the investor presentation. What we are saying, out of the total order book uh, of uh, the SPB2 MDOs, uh, 5,500 crore is uh, three years revenue. Out of that, 2,400 crore revenue in next three years will accrue to DBL. And uh, uh, we, we had given the MDO performance in terms of the physical. So against 15 million ton target, uh, we have already done 3.23 million ton coal production in quarter one. And in Pachwara, uh, we did 1.2. So, so Pachwara against the 7 million ton uh, capacity, we did 1.46 uh, million ton. So uh, uh, I don't know uh, from where the revenue uh, is taken. Uh, 
Okay, if you can elaborate, we can answer for that. Hi, sir. Uh, this is Deepak Desai. Uh, just continuing on that part, in the standalone revenue, on the vertical wise, we have shown the segmental breakup, where we have shown road, special uh, bridges and tunnel, revenues of 1,081 crore, which has declined 43%, and mining has come down to 150 crore, which has declined by 6.74%. So on the standalone basis, this quarter, there has been a decline on the vertical wise. So just wanted to understand on that part. So, uh, Ishita and uh, Deepak, we had given the uh, total, uh, I mean, the total revenue of Debian. Uh, so, nowhere we have given the coal revenue separately. We had uh, even given the order book breakups. So, in order book breakups, as Rohundi explained, we have added 2,400 crore uh, revenue from SPVs, these two SPVs to DVL for the order book purposes. But revenue, uh, which page? Which uh, which page you are referring to? Uh, can you please uh, tell me? So, so basically, in the press release, we have given the segmental breakup. Just a second, I'm sharing the details. <laughs> On the page number 20 of the press release. So, uh, so basically, uh, you are uh, referring to the. So, uh, if you can see my order book position, out of the submission, so on order book, uh, uh, basically, the total order book, if you are referring, uh, I am not very happy. Sir, I think uh, you are looking at the press release, right? You are looking at the press yeah, release? Yeah, press release, segment and contract revenue breakup on the page number 22. Right, right, right. So, there, why the reduction you are seeing is because besides the two coal MDOs, where we are doing well, there were also EPC contracts that you are doing, which are finished. So, two Nigai and Samleshwari are finished. That is why you are uh, looking at uh, that number, because the revenue that was contributed by Nigai and Samleshwari is over now. That's why there is that reduction because of the other projects getting done. But those are very small contracts compared to the MDO contracts that we'll be doing, where we have mentioned the revenue potential is uh, 5,500 crores uh, for the next three years. Uh, yes. So basically, uh, in the in the mining division, our external orders have been finished. Now internal orders will get executed over a period of next three years, which will drive the revenue growth. Would that be the This is not an internal uh, order. This is MDO is also an external order. So it's just the nature of the contract is different. An MDO is a long term contract. So one, the Siamal project is a 25 year contract, and the Pachwada project is a 55 year contract. So it's just the nature of the contract. So this is not an internal mine for us. This is ultimately with a plan to the government at a predetermined price, which also includes inflation indexes. So that's 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 what we are doing in the MDO process. So the thing that it does for us, it gives us predictability of revenue and a stability uh, of sort of income coming on a, on a long term basis. Okay. And secondly, looking at the data position, data from the last quarter uh, from 1392 crore, it has moved to 1766 crore. Uh, I do understand you mentioned about the payment related uh, these things. Uh, but just wanted to get the sense, what is the updated position uh, at the current juncture? Has there been any further reduction in this? And in the current data of 1766 crore, how much is from the JJM projects? Uh, sir, uh, uh, there is a reduction on, on this from the numbers where we are looking at what you're looking at. There is definitely reduction. We don't provide uh, security breakups on that, but if you want to get in touch with my team separately, you can uh, talk about it uh, separately. But JGM is the larger bit of it, the reason, the reason for this increase. Sure. 
and finally on the guidance we just wanted to check it again from the on the revenue basis uh, we maintain the flattish revenue growth or would we expect some decline in this year and uh, what is our current bid pipeline from the order inflow perspective at the current juncture uh sir uh, like you mentioned uh, i think it would be prudent right now to take a more uh, measured approach to our revenue and we that's why we said uh, instead of the flattish we should account for uh, uh, a sort of degrowth of 5% given the weak order uh, book that had happened uh, but going forward there is a very good order book uh, that we see in front of us of so 2 lakh crore plus uh the road and sector alone has a very uh, decent order book along with the other sectors that we are working in so we are confident that we will be able to do a 15 to 16000 crores in new orders uh, in this financial year how much is our current bid pipeline the project where we have done the bids at, at the current juncture uh, i think less than 25000 crores uh, where we already bid out okay and finally just wanted to check it out in this quarter our margin profile has come down to 11.1% and there i can see other expenses has increased to 4% of the revenues so just wanted to check uh, is there any one off in this quarter in the other expenses in terms of provisioning or any other expenses and what would be the broader margin we should be looking out uh, for the year as a whole uh sir uh, margin profile is weak because of the uh, lower execution uh, and we've guided towards uh, an 11% ebitda only going forward 11% ebitda uh, that i mentioned uh, uh so that that should be the guidance going forward any larger details that you want you can get in touch with my team and they can explain to you sure no problem thank you thanks a lot and all the best thank you sir thank you thank you Next question is from Darshal Zaveri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. A lot of my questions have already been answered. So just wanted to like understand. Like now we are also now getting into another segment of optic fiber. So how are things looking out there, sir? Like just like a brief like what will our strategy be? Because there might be some intense competition out there, or no? How is it so? Hello. So, yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Yeah, we've uh, already built out on those uh, projects, uh, the one that Optic Fiber. So there were 16 packages and uh, in total about 50,000 crore plus of order book. Uh, so us and I'm sure a few of our PSX also bid in it. Uh, we went on a uh, joint venture module in those uh, in those projects and uh, let's see. Uh, in the next couple of months, as they open up, uh, then we'll be able to give you updates. But those projects have already been uh, bidded for. Oh, okay, fair, fair enough, sir. Uh, and so, just wanted to understand. I understand we are being a bit conservative, like maybe you know how our Q1 has been. But is there a possibility of you know a good surprising edge to on you know execution pickup and order pickup? Like is that a fair assumption? How are we looking at it, sir? uh sir in terms of uh, revenue pickup i don't see a lot to happen there because you know uh, the point of time where we are sitting in the financial year right now with ordering still sort of not opened up completely uh, had order opened up a little bit more there were more of a chances uh, while someone would like me would always like to be optimistic as the realistic picture and i think that would be very uh, sort of tough at this stage uh so let's see how the year shapes out but uh, you know how the range you know how projects progress happens you know uh, if any unique surprises happen anyway uh, let's see how that progresses out but uh, while what we have in hand we are looking to do it uh, with uh, our sincere efforts what we don't have in our hand currently uh, but we are very optimistic about is the uh, large order book typically Uh, in a year after an election we see you know the order is really flowing out fast so and usually the second half of any financial year is heavier in terms of ordering so that is what gives us that comfort and confidence uh 
fair enough sir and just like last question uh, so there are some state elections coming up uh, so will that also impact order inflow or majorly ours will be related to center or it can have a positive or negative impact because maybe center has to allocate more projects so just like any idea on that so there are only a few states that are going to elections and we are not very big on the state order book anyway so we uh don't foresee that as a challenge as a large challenge anyway so uh i think because the larger order book from our part is from the national government and other uh government subsidies so i don't foresee that as a large challenge so oh, fair enough so yeah, that's it from my side all the best so thank you thank you sir thank you the next question is from parikshit kanpal HDFC Securities, please go ahead. Okay, yeah, sir. Hi. So, uh, sorry, I am looking at uh, your slide number. Uh, I am looking at the slide number 36. Sorry, sir. Uh, uh, on the stream, in which part and the uh, alpha DBL unit. So, it looks like you will be recording almost 3 280 plus 90 for so almost 375 crores of distribution in FY 26. So this will get reflected in your standalone other income. So basically, uh, out of the, you must have seen in the same unit units as well. So distributions are in three forms. One is uh, dividend, interest, and uh, capital return. So we are talking about the total distribution. So uh, in 26 slide number, it is showing total distribution. So we don't know today ki whether it will be. Uh, Uh, interest or dividend or uh, capital return. So, the uh, actual uh, breakup will be at the time of distribution. But this is projected uh, distribution from stream. We have taken around 13 percent dis- dis- distribution. Uh, first quarter was higher than the expected, and the uh, alpha DBL we have taken 10-11 uh, percent uh, uh, distribution uh, on uh, conservative side. So these are the Distributions we have taken uh, into account. Listen, given the nature of the capital structure of these invests, so how much do you think can accrue to your PNL out of this four three hundred and eighty odd crores in a five twenty six? How much do you think can come into your your PNL? So, so the, the though that is not known to us now, but uh, if you can see last year, it is two third one third. So two third. Uh, uh in the income and one third uh, as a capital return but this ratio will change based on not uh, so various parameters so i don't know as on today this is a substantial number coming accruing to your profitability that's why i was questioning and uh, so i understood you said two third may as of now given the historical capital structure and distribution it could be two third but it will be known closer to when it gets distributed uh so second question is on the mdos now these mdos we are uh, at least in crmal we are ahead of actual contracted production and in uh, pachwara we are lagging so just wanted to understand why uh, I mean, uh, so if you can give us what was the total profitability of mdo in the last financial year and in this one quarter how much these two mdos would have contributed and how given that there is a significant ramp up happening so How do we see the profitability of these MDO over the next uh, few years? Uh, sir, basically uh, we are not lagging in the Pachwara. We are on track. Uh, how much we have to deliver, and we have to do only seven million metric ton of coal production in uh, in the financial year. So we are on track to achieve that. So there is no lag there. Uh, Uh, sorry, if there is some miscommunication, but that is completely true. Like I said in my opening remarks as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, in Kerala we are 50% above target. Yeah, Kerala you are above target, but in FY24 I saw the number of FY24 where seven metric ton was in uh, to be. Uh, no, that was the first year of Parichit ji. That was the first year of the starting of the mine. So there were so many problems in the road transport. But now this year, year we will achieve the full target of seven million. But sir, इसमें तो हम देखेंगे when इतना ramp up हो रहा है तो इसमें तो मतलब if you if I mean we can share some numbers on how the profitability has been in Q1 because if they are ahead of schedule then your profits get pre-pound right and also if we can throw some light on how much capex is spending to ramp up to the full potential in both the mines. 
सर वैसे वी डोंट शेयर प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी बाय प्रोजेक्ट और बाय सेक्टर सो एज अर कंबाइन में ही वुड बी अ बेटर वे टू लुक एट इट बट द प्रोजेक्ट्स आर बेटर प्रॉफिटेबल देन आर आर नंबर दैट यू मेंशन सो इट बेटर वे इट्स इट्स बेटर सो बट वी शुड लुक एट द कंपनीज कंबाइन and pending capex kitna hai sir in dono project mein to ramp up to the full potential like how much should be the capex you will need to incur to ramp up the mines so parikshit ji pachwara we have no capex uh, okay. and uh, in terms of cr mal the total capex originally projected was around 2700 crore out of that around 280 crore is already done Uh, which is uh, uh, HEMM we have uh, bought in uh, the SPV, the co- uh, SCRML SPV, and uh, once the coal uh, handling plant will uh, start, then there will be more capex. Uh, but let me tell you, the out of the total 2,700 crore, 2,040 crore uh, financial type is already done in FY22 uh, with SBI Union Bank and uh, Power Finance Corporation. So that will be funded from there, and that capex is in SPV level, not at the DBL level. इसमें आप दो 2040 का जो प्रोजेक्ट फाइनेंस आपने टाइप किया अगेंस्ट दैट यू हैव गिवन द इक्विटी आउटफ्लो आई थिंक इन योर स्लाइड वेयर यू शो द हैम एंड एंड सो टोटल सीआर में में 412 419 करोड़ का इक्विटी रिक्वायरमेंट है बैलेंस एंड बैलेंस 1600 करोड़ विल बी सो डेट विल बी 1600 करोड़ सो सो टोटल आई सेड 2700 करोड़ आउट ऑफ दैट Uh, uh, equity is 576 crore and around 2042 crore is the uh, debt and out of debt we have already uh, uh, taken disbursement of 224 crore and we have invested equity 157 crore so uh, total uh, uh, 380 is already done out of 2700 crore okay come here sir so uh, and uh, so once uh, on the inwards if you start getting this inwards as dividends what will be your intent i mean because will it pass it, will it pass on to the investors as dividend or you will reinvest it into business so how do you look because this will be substantial cash flows which will come uh, accrue to us because 400 odd crores if i see if i 27 numbers you are already showing 450 odd crores of inflows Uh, absolutely right uh, there will be a significant inflow to the company uh, in terms of how we think about uh, money that comes into the company uh, it will be dependent on the opportunity that will be in from the company whether we want to uh, whether if if we see that you know we don't have any good opportunity we might end up just uh, getting the dividends to our shareholders if we see there is a better opportunity higher return ratio higher roe for us and for our shareholders and what they're looking at us from then we might look at uh, investing in those assets but let me tell you a few things very categorically number one our intent for the next like we uh, we mentioned for the next two years is to reduce debt completely so our intent is very clear so whatever money that comes to the company uh, currently first and foremost will be used for debt reduction to make the company debt free at a stand alone level so that is happening on a stand alone number two our intent is to make sure that the consolidated debt keeps on going to the invest so even the consolidated balance sheet of detail looks good and wherever we have debt it is all uh, backed by the project finances that should be our number two intent after that whatever cash flows are coming we will look to see whether we can deploy it in long term assets which will keep generating returns for the shareholder of the company over a long term uh, and with a higher return uh, ratio like i mentioned if not then we will take a call of uh, distributing it to shareholders as dividend so it will all depend at that time uh, but our intent is uh, as i'm sort of uh, articulating to you you want these all these inwards units which you receive uh, the understanding 4 or 5000 4 and 1/2 5000 crore i think put together uh, is it right like the number will be close to 4 and 1/2 thousand and if yes then will you be consolidating this debt of these inwards or will it become an associate once uh, the inwards is operational optionalized oh no it is that the debt does not come to these we are only the unit holders of that inwards we the debt is not the debt that goes to the inwards level we are just like a shareholder So company will just be unit holders. So that that the hand that which you are currently carrying on will get knocked down because of consolidation. So it will not reflect in your consolidated balance sheet, right? At the asset level that you are talking about, 
so the the, the, the so, so number one says the assets that we transfer to the invit that debt will transfer there the instead of the in, in, instead of the equity that we invested against that which we will get the units so the 4000 crore plus of units in the alpha and dbl invit and the 800 crore odds of like units in the frame invit those are all equity uh, instrument they have uh, that's not any debt instrument so that will be that those will be the equity holding of dbl that means your consol will closely mirror your stand alone debt which will be anyways net cash by then in 2 years which you are guiding so you will be hardly carrying some debt on your mdo which may be you said 2000 crores and plus something in other coal mine so that could be what will remain so mdo debt will largely remain right rest all that will get down mdo debt will remain and if any new hand projects come to us that will come but then those will only have a churning time so every time we are using you can you should think of it like a dbl will be Holding that debt for any time of three years, you know, from start to, from the time we win a project to the time we are able to finally uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, move it to an invit. So from getting it in to finally getting rid of the project uh, to the invit or to invest, so that that time frame is three, three and a half years uh, from the start of the debt date. That's that's roughly you should sort of think about. So just my last question on balance sheets and where one thing which always. creates i mean kind of like which i am very much very not much comfortable is your inventory levels now you've started de growing you've stabilized your growth but still your inventory is not coming down it's at, still at 33 40 crores which is almost one third of your sales may potentially for this year so which is like and this is the highest in the industry when the industry is running at 40 days or 30, 25 30 days still at 110 120 days so now we don't get any bonuses also from any of our early completion bonus where we used to maintain aggregate inventory and road as, as the percentage is also come down so we wanted to get a sense and guidance on how will be the rundown of this inventory because this is what is depleting our returns ratios and elevating our working capital so if this is not there i mean so why still so much of inventory you are carrying on your books this can give some more color that will be helpful and where do you see that by year end i mean by 2025 uh mr thank you for your question uh, i understand this has been a case of concern for people but uh, like you mentioned you only look at one bit of it which is the inventory when you look at a working capital level uh, our working capital days are uh, in line with the industry only uh, how we are kind of uh, sort of converting our cash that that line that cycle is in line with the industry now obviously dbl our business model our way of working uh, has been of one style for a very long time it's a big shift as we are turning around as we are making amends to the way that we do things as we also explore many many sectors uh, it will take time so while there are uh, there are amendments and there are different targets that we have uh, this also will complete can keep on coming down uh, over the next 2 years Uh, to give you a target right now, because as the mix of projects change and all those other things change, our strategies keep on changing uh, around how we are doing projects. Uh, this, these all things will change, but it will be early for me to give a target. But yes, we are aiming for reduction of that also. Okay, I think this is the one last thing which you should. I mean, if you are able to tackle it, I think then there could be substantial. We will, we will for hundred percent. That is also a work in progress, and we are do, doing that uh, work as well. So you will see that will also keep on progressively happen over the course of the next uh, two years. Like as like I mentioned, as we keep on changing the direction of the ship, uh, this will also uh, happen. Sure, sir. Thank you, uh, Rohan. Thank you, Devinder Ji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Vishal Periwal from Anti Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Uh, thanks uh, for the opportunity. A uh, couple of uh, questions. Uh, first, uh, you mentioned on the coal uh, uh, side that uh, we'll do something like five thousand five hundred crore kind of top line for the next three years accumulated. Uh, so, is that fair to say because the order book uh, for this coal is two thousand five hundred, which is kind of opex for the MDO? Uh, so i mean we can make a bidda of like 3000 crore cumulative for uh, the the coal business for us well i'm not sure ki what the calculation that we are doing but uh, ebitda we not giving uh, sector wise break up we are not uh, doing uh, no no i think uh, basically based on the numbers i would just uh, whatever is shared by you and that's what like 5500 crore is the top line for 3 years 
Yes, you mentioned five thousand five hundred crore is what we'll do for uh, the coal MDU business. Yes, and then you you, you thought like because of oh yes, yes. So I am answering uh, your question, uh, Vishal ji. Uh, basically, this five thousand five hundred crore is the total revenue of both the SCBs. Out of that, two thousand four hundred crore worth scope is given to DBN. Balance scope is directly done by uh, SCBs. So is it? Uh, it, it is not correct to say if the EBITDA is 3,000 crore, it can't be. Right. Yes. So uh, there is only some scope given to DBL, which is 2,000 crore. Okay, okay, got it. And uh, second, uh, you mentioned that uh, that uh, optic fiber cable, uh, 16 packages that we have bidded. Is it? Uh, I know. I mean, like you know, though the outcome will be uh, known in times to come. But in terms of, uh, is it like you know, what exactly our role in this? It's in a, uh, uh, I mean, the, any JV that we have done, what is our share? Uh, will it be uh, okay to share that? Sure, so the, the site uh, construction thing, which is trenching and laying of optical fiber, all those will be done by DBIL, the site uh, construction okay. operations. Okay, and uh, is this done like, you know, uh, we have on our own, we are doing it, or it's in some JV, uh, whatever the order that we get, some JV that is, will be getting booked? Yes, so it's an APC project, sir, but it's a JV with uh, several lines. So, Vishal ji, uh, the total optical fiber business, as Rohan ji said, uh, the trenching and you know, laying of uh, optical fiber will be done by us, and balance, like supply work, like optical, optic fiber and routers and all, will be supplied by our JV partners, sir, like optical. So, there is a split between both the partners, key. the scope is split. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, maybe a uh, two uh, bookkeeping sort of question. So in terms of tax rate, how how exactly we see for uh, FI 25 and 26 for us? Uh, this quarter it was something like you know 40 percent odd. So just thought to check. Yes, sir. Around 33 percent, sir. Okay, so it will be 33 percent for uh, FI 25 and a similar for uh, next year, right, sir? Yes. Yes. Okay, and then one last thing on even on depreciation, uh, I mean, sharp reduction that we are seeing, is it just because uh, I mean the gross lock uh, is seeing a reduction, or we have changed our depreciation uh, depreciation rate also? There is no change in uh, depreciation rate. The only uh, reason is net block is reduced because we have not bought fresh equipment in last two years, whereas the uh, the depreciation is going on, so net block itself is reducing. Okay, okay, got it, sir. Yeah, that's all from my side. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vishal Ji. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vaibhav Shah from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, in the equity tracker sheet, we have mentioned that uh, the invested equity till uh, June is 1646 crores. So, what would be the same number as on March 24? Allow us a moment, sir. We will tell you. Yeah. So around uh, one uh, sixty one sixty five crore is invested into uh, in this quarter. So you can minus that uh, from the total equity. So it is. Uh, 1645 minus, uh, say, uh, or say 1800 minus 160. So around 1500, 14 crore. So you invested something in uh, CR money in this quarter? I wanted the ham equity as of March. Uh, I am I'm just uh, opening the last quarter presentation. So in the last quarter presentation, it was for 16 amps, so it is not comparable. So that's why I know the it. reason for that because we so we changed this because of feedback uh, from uh, market participants that uh, the, maybe the way that we were explaining was uh, not giving a uh, character. So that's why we changed it. So, well, uh, you can uh, see uh, the, 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 there is 160 old crore investment in quarter one FI25. So, you can minus from 1800. Uh, so it is 14, uh, 1540 crore 
as of March 31st, 2024, out of 19 M projects and three months. So, so uh, the ham project number, so investment in uh, ham projects in first quarter would be how much out of that 165 crores is is for value of my question. So sir, it's all uh, largely two hand projects only. CRML might be very negligible, less than five crores, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And secondly, the incremental 760 crores is pending. So that would be done from the standalone books now, or some subsidies also would be investing incrementally. Sorry, some what would be investing? Uh, subsidies. So, uh, so we have invested uh, certain parts no, from other no, subsidies. We, as we, are, we are proposing to uh, invest the balance equity from DBN. Uh, from now onwards. Okay, okay. So secondly, uh, on the uh, the units which we are expecting the distribution from units of Chairman Alpha, we have indicated the number. Uh, so what will be the tax implication on this? So uh, the tax uh, wise, the uh, interest is taxable in the hands of the receiver at the maximum tax rate. So if DBL is receiving uh, the interest, then it is taxable at the DBL's tax rate. Uh, dividend is uh, free uh, because uh, same is uh, into uh, the old tax design. Uh, and then uh, principal return, there is no tax. So we can say out of the 13, 14% distribution from SRIM, the net, uh, net tax return is around 11%. And the same number for uh, Alpha? Alpha, we have projected or estimated around uh, 10 more uh, percentage. So the net, net tax return would be lower than even 10. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, lastly, uh, what would what are our capex plans on the standalone business for FI25 and 26? So FI25, we can uh, guide you now because uh, the total capex would be in the range of 150 to 170 crore. Out of that, 30 crore is already done in quarter one. Okay, and sir, uh, earlier they indicated that over a longer term, we are targeting EBITDA margins of say 12 to 14 odd percent on the standalone DBL. Uh, so this year has been weak in first quarter and we are expecting somewhere around 11 to 12 percent for FI25. But once the execution takes up in say 26 or 27 or be over the next two to three years, uh, what would be our margin uh, uh, trajectory? Yes, sir. I, once uh, the order book is uh, uh, in line and once you have good uh, orders and once the cycle goes uh, back again, uh, that is the margin profile that uh, we think that is very achievable. And that's what we're try targeting. So, 12 to 14 looks achievable, maybe over a longer term. Yeah, 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 sir. Yeah, okay. Those were my questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next question is from Prem Khurana from Anandrathi Shares and Stock Brokers. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question, sir. Um, I mean, most of my questions are already answered. Just one uh, small clarification uh, on our financials that we've reported. So in consolidated uh, numbers that you've reported, the segment highlights, uh, there is this 510 crore rupees of loss in uh, annuity projects and others. Of what, what exactly would this be? And even on EPC side, the margin seems to be almost around to the extent of 30 odd percent, which generally used to be sub 10%. Would you be able to kind of clarify these two, please? So which page are you referring to? Would be so kind of this is, this is uh, so the, the result release that you have, okay. result release that you have, 15 of 19. The segment highlights consolidated. You, you're looking, no, no, you're talking, looking at, you said the, the segment uh, on the uh, page you are looking for? 15 of 19 of the PDF.
Okay. I'll also minutes we just stay referring to it. Yeah. Yeah, So I think primarily what you're referring to is uh, the losses that are on project during construction period. I think those are the ones uh, because of India's rules. But uh, why don't you have a separate call with my uh, finance team to understand it in detail? Yeah. Uh, because when I look at the comparable quarters, I mean this number was not this large. I mean any time in the past, and even the EPC side, 920 crore rupees on. 3,000 crore rupees of top line again seems to be on a higher side versus when you look at Q4 or Q1 last year uh, was sub 10% sort of number. So no worries, I mean, I'll uh, take it off. Uh, so right. why, why don't you take it separately because yeah, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'm a, I'm I'll just separate. one more small clarification. I think uh, the money that we said I mean, we're supposed to receive from uh, Alpha Alternatives, right, for the 26% the stake. Uh, 478 crore rupees that you show on slide 27 uh, is adjusted for the 160 crore rupees that we've received, right? Sorry, sir. Sorry, out of the 478 crore, we received 190 crore this quarter, the current quarter in July 2024. 190 crores in Q2, you're saying? Yes. And balance will be received uh, majorly in this quarter, and one asset probably may go to early next quarter. So uh, the balance revenue around 300 old crore will be received uh, during this quarter and early next quarter. Oh, okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Shravan Shah from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, sir, uh, this the uh, inuit distribution that we have uh, spoken and we have what is there in the uh, page uh, 26 of presentation. So broadly, how one can look at in terms of how much this will come to standalone PNL because something will also go to DBL infra also. So uh, that can help in terms of percentage. Broader percentage will help. Shavanji, uh, you know, uh, out of these 18 assets, these uh, units will come from the DBL Alpha. 26% is held by Alpha. So balance 74 is held by us. 51% is direct DBL and 23% by the subsidiary to DBL. So directly in DBL, uh, you can see the ratio of 51 to 23 in total 74. Uh, sorry, 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 sir. Uh, can you repeat the last line? So I'm saying in the DBL Alpha DB, the shareholding is like this: 74% by DBL Group and 26% by Alpha Group. So this the units will be 74% of the invest, and the 74% is split between 51% by DBL and 23% by a subsidiary of DBL. So direct DBL. 51% out of this 74%. So if I am holding 74 uh, units, then 51 uh, uh, from the bill. Okay, okay. So broadly, kind of 60%. Uh, if if I if I broadly look at 51% uh, of 74, broadly 64 percent that we will. And for same, uh, uh, how one can look at? Uh, same 60 40 60 dbl and 40 uh, uh, dbl infra sets. okay so same same way both for both uh, broadly it is the 60 percent that we will be receiving that standalone right okay and and sir uh, uh, though we have said i just wanted to uh, further uh, clarify in terms of uh, for uh, data, uh, one of the entire working capital, obviously, you have explained the inventory uh, in, at that uh, uh, wanted to reduce. But in terms of the particularly the data, uh, will it come back to the normal as on March? It was uh, 48 days. So uh, now, as you are saying, uh, you have received some money. So in terms of uh, uh, back to uh, by end of March 25, we will be having the similar 48, uh, 50 odd days uh, data days. Yes, yes. Okay, and overall total, uh, whatever the increase uh, has happened, uh, 
15 18 days so that should also uh, come back to the uh, normal level in terms of the working capital days by end of march yes sir okay 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 got it got it thank you thank you sir vanji thank you very much that was the last question in queue i would now like to hand the conference over to mr rohan suryavanshi for closing comments um on behalf of the whole dbl family i'd like to thank all of you guys for coming here and uh, asking your questions uh in case the questions that we were unable to answer if you were able unable to ask please feel free to reach out uh towards uh personally uh and we would be happy to answer any uh questions i look forward to seeing all of you guys in our next uh quarter call thank you very much on behalf of dilip bilcon limited that concludes the conference thank you for joining us ladies and gentlemen you may now disconnect your lines